No one should ever shut the door. I think as students visit, see a large school, see a medium school, see a small school, get a feel for what it's like. So uh, factors to consider, what makes a good fit? So sure. I always say to people, ask what's most important to you now, but also in the next 60 years. So number one, um, the major, you know, what do you want to actually study? Two, location, suburban, urban, how far from home do you want to be? Three, you know, size, both in terms of student body on the campus, as well as student teacher ratio. Flexibility, core curriculum, open curriculum. Do you want to have um, opportunities to do uh, research as a freshman? Does that mean you have to go to a you want to go to a freshman, uh, sorry, a research university where freshmen can actually do that? Uh, what are the study abroad options? How flexible are your learning options? Uh, and then the social, you know, sports. How much of a sports scene do you want? How much of a rah-rah school do you like? Uh, Greek system, do you want to even be a part of that? Um, and also, what are the questions regarding the cultural and like political um, factors of the social scene of the, of, the, of the campus and the students who are usually there? And then sort of finally, uh, from a career aspect, the alumni network, you know, what are these people doing? You know, how much access do you have to them? And also how strong is your career services office? So Michael, these are just sort of like six of the major sort of buckets on factors to consider on, um, you know, what makes a school a good fit. We'd love to hear your insights on these. I mean, obviously, Chris, you, you kind of put them right in a good context in terms of it. But I think for a lot of students, you know, the number one you've got on the list major is really interesting to think about because realistically, a many, many students will change their major from what they think they're going to study when they first start in college. So it's important to think about this college has the major that I hope and that I want to study, but also perhaps in the background, and this can factor into the kind of school a student might decide to go to, will there be other options if I decide I want to do something else? There are a lot of kids who go into engineering and realize after they've done a year of it, my God, I don't want to be an engineer. And in that situation, if you're at an engineering only school, that can be difficult, which might bode for thinking about a larger university with a really strong engineering program that has other programs. That being said, however, you also want to make sure that the school you're looking at has the major that you want. You know, it don't, lots of times students, you know, pick a school based on prestige, the name of the school, whatever, you know, but if you want to be an undergraduate business major, you might want to reflect on whether I'm better off looking at Penn and Cornell in the Ivy League who have the strongest undergraduate business programs, or do I do a major in another area, perhaps in economics, and then think about what you would do with business in graduate school, you know? But again, I think one of the things that's important is to see what the schools offer, make sure it has what you currently would like to study, but make sure there's an opportunity for a backup plan as well too. So that's my first thought in terms of a major. The second point we've got up here is location, you know? You know, we work with a lot of New York City kids and it's very obvious that to them, they might want to stay in an urban environment, but some of them might want to try something really different. So to think about, you know, what's okay and what's not okay. A kid who's lived in the city all his life may want to be out in the country in a beautiful, you know, bucolic campus where they can just kind of relax, knowing they're going to come back to New York for their spring breaks, their Christmas breaks, their summers, and also may perhaps after college but a kid who also really thrives in New York City life might want to be in Boston, Philadelphia, DC, LA, or Chicago. So I think that's something to think about in terms about location. So size, um, you know, I think lots of times you want to balance off what are you looking for in terms of size? What we mentioned before about major, a larger school is probably going to have more opportunities in terms of lots of classes that if for some reason you want to switch a major and switch into something else, that's great. But Many large schools are going to teach large lecture classes where your introductory class in psychology might have 200 kids in the class with a lecture up front and then breaking up into smaller groups. But I think when you look at schools, you know, see what the student to teacher ratio is. One thing that I think is really important in terms of that, see that the good teachers teach on the undergraduate level. Absolutely. There are a lot of great universities who will, you know, claim all these great professors that they have on their campus who may only be teaching graduate students and doing research. So you wanna make sure that the school you're talking about, there's a good student to teacher ratio, but also who's gonna be teaching your classes. And I think when we talk about student body, it also adds in a little bit down on the social, what kind of student body do you want? You know, If I'm an international student 
Do I want to go to a larger school with lots of other international kids? Do I want to be at a school where I can be my own self, you know, to be, have a chance to be who I am? And I think lots of times students' experiences will be reflected by what they did in high school. I mean, if they were in a large high school, surprisingly, sometimes those kids want to be in a smaller college. For kids that are coming out of really tiny high schools, they may want that big experience or, as I talked to a student the other day, may want to continue with that smaller student to teacher ratio because they're used to having that support and that kind of contact. Flexibility. I mean, obviously, one of the things you need to do and look at. I interviewed a student yesterday who's very excited about looking at Brown. The thing that's important to think about that is Brown has an incredibly open curriculum. And the thing that the student was excited about was they realized they could only take 32 to 40 courses during the time they're in college. And mm -hmm. if they have to spend the first year, first year and a half, fulfilling core requirements, they've just lost the whole opportunity to take courses that they want to take. Other students want structure a core curriculum that makes them sample lots of different things to make sure they have that kind of structure in terms of how they start off with before they pick a major perhaps during sophomore year. So I think there's a real balance in terms of a student needs to think about what makes more sense for them. A student going into an open curriculum better be ready to make choices themselves without somebody telling them what to do, what direction they need. So I think in many ways, there are many students who are better suited for a core curriculum. So again, that's a piece of it. And you mentioned it in your opening remarks, you know, make sure if research is important to you, there are gonna be research opportunities for undergraduates. The one downside I think for a lot of large universities is the research opportunities normally go to grad students or if they're right. lucky, juniors and seniors. Some smaller universities, smaller colleges may let kids start doing research right away as a freshman. You wanna ask about those opportunities. You wanna ask, ask about access in terms of the opportunity to do those things. Social, um, I was fortunate early in my career, I was a big time college track coach. Um, I actually coached at Auburn University in the Southeastern Conference. And I have to say it was one of the biggest highlights of my life, you know, that- Coach of the year twice, Michael, you were coach of the year at the Southeastern SEC. Conference. And when we won the SEC in cross country one year, they introduced the team in front of 80,000 people in the football crazy. stadium. I mean, crazy, you know, so, there are lots of kids who are diehard March Madness, you know, college basketball, you know, sadly didn't happen this year, but it's like the end all be all to lots of kids, you know, take a great school like Duke academically. And there are all these kids who become crazy when it comes into talking about college basketball. So well, they're called the Cameron crazies, right? Cameron crazies, exactly right. So I think in terms of it, thinking about, do you want that kind of aspect as part of your life? Or am I perfectly happy with a nice quiet division three school we're a bunch of kids go out and watch Amherst and Williams play each other in football. You know, I mean, it's perfectly fine. You have up there the Greek system. I think it's important for students to think about what's important for them in terms of the aspects of kind of the social world of what a college is going to be like. I use the Ivy League again. I was, I've been doing a lot of chatting with students in the last couple of days. But, you know, a place like Dartmouth, a place like Cornell, a place like Penn have very extensive Greek systems. But you mentioned Brown before, Columbia, they don't have large Greek systems. They're places where a kid maybe creates and develops their own social life. So I think that's important in terms of that aspect. You know, funny thing, yesterday I was talking again to another student about Brown. What's interesting is the political piece. Yes, there's a perception that a lot of schools are very liberal, you know, in terms of what they do. But there's a young Republicans club at Brown. Of course. You know, so I mean, in terms of you know, you want to look at and see what is the basis of what the school is all about, but also make sure that there's an ability for other kinds of expression, you know, the ability that you still be who you are, and a lot of what the culture of the school is all about. Moving on to next then, career, Michael, what do you yeah, got? It's really, it's really interesting. When I was at Oberlin, they had a line that you were an OB for life. And I think ah, a, lot of that, a that. lot of that had to do with career services, is mm -hmm. that, you know, they were really supportive in terms of helping students get ready to go out in the real world in terms of prepping them for job interviews, having people come to campus to recruit them for, you know, potential jobs, but also making sure that the students there understood that they would continue to work with them in the future, that when there was a change in their career, perhaps a change in something they wanted to do, they were still there. And I think you can make sure that you want to identify these things exist at the schools that you're looking at. Will you continue to be part of that school's family for life? Will they continue to support you? Will they continue to help you? 
what kind of alumni network do they have in the area that you're going to come to? I mean, you come to New York and there's a Brown Club, there's a Penn Club, there's a Princeton Club, there's a Yale and a Harvard Club, there's a Cornell Club, and many of them have physical buildings in the city. So you have this network of people that you're always connected to post-college in addition to what you're able to start once you're at the school. But the last thing I'll say about it is that, you know, be careful of the marketing. You know, one of the things that we're doing more and more uh, at Kate's is career advising. And the reason is because schools aren't getting it done. So while there are some schools that do have great career offices, there are other schools, I will not name them, but you've heard of them, where um, you know, parents and students are finding it lacking. So my point is, is that do your best to also talk to students at these different universities, especially when it comes to career services support, because what might be sort of marketed to you in the website or sort of you know, presented to you during orientation may not be in fact um, what it is in reality.